Welcome to the Online Success Journey Podcast, your opportunity to discover and learn from entrepreneurs like yourself. This is not your typical podcast, but a place where you can get the real story and find out how real people encounter speed bumps and detours, but journey through to find success. Now here's your host for the Online Success Journey Podcast, Patience. Hello everyone and welcome to Online Success Journey. This is episode 73. Are you ready to join the clan? Today we have uh, Olivia Charlotte, a speaker and author. She launched uh, Olivia Charlotte International in 2014 and now helps women entrepreneurs around the world make their own impact and build their wealth through upleveling their mindset. Hello Olivia. Hi there. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming. I know here the clan is anxious to hear your story. So let's get started with the, with the basics. Can you tell my clan a little bit about your background, about what you did before you started your online business? Take us right up to the last job or business before you are online. Yeah, sure. So um, to kind of give a little background to when before I, I started the online thing. So I grew up moving around. I was born in Japan and I moved to South Africa, Austria, Germany, kind of all over the place. And my parents are French Belgian. So as a result of all the traveling, I ended up doing a bachelor's in Boston, Massachusetts in the United States. And uh, it was a bachelor's in business. And it made me think, okay, I obviously am very curious about business. I love, I think it's fascinating. I find it very interesting to look at why people, you know, do what they do and why people struggle at times and so on and how to solve problems in business. And so I joined um, Bloomberg, which is a financial data, uh, financial services company, and it was based in London, uh, in England. So I moved to London about seven years ago now, and I started working in financial sales for about three years. And it was very intense. It was very fast paced. It was very challenging. A lot of my clients were bankers, portfolio managers, traders. And I remember traveling probably three weeks a month to go to from London to France to work with uh, clients who were in banks in Paris, basically. And I just found out after about two and a half, three years that maybe like more like two and a half years, I just realized, you know what, there's got to be something more that I can be doing in the world. I I, like there's absolutely, I just knew that I could be making a bigger difference. And I knew that I was capped where I was in terms of my ability to change lives and make a difference and use my actual strengths and gifts. So I decided I didn't really know what that looked like. But I thought to myself, I'm going to quit this job. Uh, because I'm not going to find it here. So I quit my job there and I started a master's in organizational psychology and psychiatry, uh, did a coaching qualification with the coaching academy and did an NLP training, which is neuro linguistics programming. And I started my first business, uh, basically a dating events company for global nomads, people who felt multicultural. And so I started that in London for 11 months. Um, it was really amazing, very interesting. I learned a lot, a lot, a lot, but I realized that actually it was still not what I wanted to do. And so I decided to, to finish that after 11 months, uh, even though I, I declined an investment offer, somebody had said, you know, I'd be happy to invest money into this business because I see that obviously they're going to be more and more global nomads around the world, the more people travel. Um, But so I decided still to decline that and to start my coaching and speaking business, which is Olivia Charlet International. Um, And yeah, and and since then, it's just been basically amazing. I feel so in my calling. I know that this is what I'm meant to be doing. And I help women entrepreneurs all around the world basically start creating clients, making money, but mostly unleashing and really impacting the world with their specific strengths and gifts um, specifically. Wow. Wow. That's a great background, Olivia. Hey, (laughs) very busy. Okay, why do you do what you do? Um, I do what I do because I think that there are too many people on this planet who have so much power, so much potential, so much um, inside of them, and they're not actually utilizing it. And I think that there are so many people as well who ultimately want to be living a life that feels more fulfilling, exciting, fun, um, free, and so on, but they don't really know how to tap into that. And they're, they don't really feel allowed, like they're not really giving themselves permission to truly live the life that would be the most um, 
satisfying and fulfilling for them. And so uh, I do what I do because I want to serve and coach and mentor as many leaders as possible who are then going to be able to create change in other people's lives and really lead. So for me, that that was really, really crucial is like, obviously, if I can impact leaders, then they'll go out and impact their own communities and change the world in their way, regardless of what kind of business they're running. Uh, the women that I, I work with are often very heart centered and want to make an impact. So if I can help them make an impact, then I guess we'll all be able to rise up together. Why women? Are you being a bias? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, I started working with both men and women when I first started my business 18 months ago, about now the second business. And I enjoyed working with both of them, but I was getting much better results with women. Um, and I really enjoyed working with men, women. I felt like there was absolutely a difference in terms of how they think, in terms of how they are, in terms of how they feel. Um, I definitely felt a difference. And personally, I just knew that I was better suited to um, coach women. And I knew that there are plenty of people out there who were going to be able to coach men incredibly well as well. Um, so it was more of a choice. And then after it was also niching, you know, marketing is it's more powerful when you can, to a certain extent, filter slightly who it is that you're working with, because otherwise you're not really going to necessarily make money or create clients when it's literally you're everyone for every like you're everything for everyone basically so I also realized that just on a business perspective and profit perspective it made more sense to start filtering down a little bit what kind of women do you take on do you take on beginners do you take on women who have already got their businesses and it's in the middle six figure seven figure what kind of women are you taking on so there's a mix for sure. I would say that the majority of women are women who maybe they've, you know, been running their business for six months or a year or even a year and a half. And for some reason, either they're not making any money whatsoever. And so they're kind of like, well, I don't understand. Like I've learned everything. I, you know, whether it's a PR business or a network marketing business or a coaching business or a teaching business, they're kind of like, I don't understand why it's not working, like why I'm not receiving money. Um, so that's one of the types of people that I work with. And then another type is people who are already making maybe, you know, 6,000, 7,000 pounds or dollars or euros, regardless of what currency you're in a month. But now they're really ready to start really impacting a larger group of people, a larger number of people. And so they don't really know how to start breaking, you know, the, the 10K months, the 15K months, the 20K months and so on. And so they're, they're really looking to be able to break down the mindset blocks, the fears, the doubts, even the things that they don't even realize are holding them back because of um, unconscious um, rules and values that they have in their head. Um, so I would say that it's definitely a mix um, in terms of the people that I work with, but those are kind of women. Um, okay. Man aside, how did you know you are successful? A good question. Um, I felt the most successful, to be honest with you, when my clients were getting incredible results. So, for example, one of my clients um, that I first worked with, it feels like ages ago now, but she moved all the way from London to Australia. She started a brick and mortar business um, doing acupuncture, uh, acupuncture and um like Chinese medicine and healing of all kinds. And she literally within two and a half months had like 22 patients coming back every week. And it was just insane. Just the, like the speed in which that got built up and, and had the fact that she even moved countries and everything. And now she's even found the love of her life and she'd been single for a long time. So it's like a real transformation. Another one, of my clients went from having never made money in her business, even though she'd been doing it for like eight months to then making $7,000 the first month and then $10,000 the second month. Um, and you know, I have so many stories like that. So for me, it's not really about me personally, to be honest with you. It's often about the people that I'm impacting like that, that, I mean, that's ultimately why I decided to change from working in a job to doing what I do today. So for me, it's like, I felt most successful when I could really help people create their own results and really Really get them to unleash and live fully on their terms to feel very, very um, just fulfilled and excited and feeling like, you know what, I'm really living the utmost that I can be living right now. Um, because I think we only live on this planet once in this body experience, at least. And um, it's just like, I, I guess I just genuinely believe that you might as well live it really fully. And I think a lot of people feel like they're not quite doing that. So I think that's the most for me, that's when I felt truly, truly successful.
How does someone know that they are living the life really fully to the fullest? <laughs> how do you know? Or how do you know someone is living to under means? I don't know. How do yeah. you determine that? <laughs> That's a good question. So I think that there are a couple things. One, it's, you know, how are you feeling? Like on a daily basis, are you feeling truly exhilarated, excited, happy, fulfilled, energized? Or on a day-to-day -day basis, are you feeling kind of flat and just kind of like, overall just like kind of like okay like happy but like okay that to me is like kind of the difference between people who are really living on the edge whereas people who are just kind of sitting back and just kind of doing you know what they can but not necessarily pushing their their growth and their limits and their potential um another way i guess to see if, if it's like people are really living fully is you know do you feel scared on a weekly basis you know are you are you getting out of your comfort zone that you feel afraid, whether it's, you know, getting on stage and speaking to people or whether it's investing in a, in a program that you know you need to be in because it's going to really propel you forward or if it's moving countries or traveling because you know in your gut that that's what needs to happen, but you're scared to do it. Like any of these things, I think it's really are you feeling afraid week by week because that would show you that you are truly you know, growing and, and getting out of your comfort zone. Um, so for me, those are kind of good telltale signs to see if you're really living quote unquote fully. Wow. Okay. You mentioned that there are so many women on this planet who needs your help and who also make impact. But do you believe anyone, any woman out there on this planet can become an entrepreneur? You know, it's so funny. People talk about that a lot about the two different, like some people say, you know, only certain kinds of people can be entrepreneurs. And then other people say, um, only, you know, like everyone can be an entrepreneur. Personally, I think, um, I actually do believe that anyone could be an entrepreneur. However, what I do think it takes and what is necessary to actually then create a profitable business, at least what I believe is hunger. Like if you don't have hunger, like as in proper hunger, like you're going to go out there and freaking make it happen, then it, you know, you can have all the tools, all the strategies, all the right resources in front of you. It doesn't matter because it, it, you really do need that hunger so that regardless of what you come across, an obstacle, a plateau, um, something that you didn't expect, maybe even a personal thing that shows up in your life whilst you're starting the business, maybe kids things like there are just so many pieces in our life that can come in the way. And so I think if you don't have hunger or if you're not willing to tap into that hunger and that drive, then it doesn't work. So I think I do believe that actually any person could become an entrepreneur, but I do think that you have to switch on that hunger um, and flip that switch because otherwise like you'll basically constantly feel frustrated and you won't really be making the money that you desire, I think is the biggest point. Wow. Okay. Hey. What do assurance and so encouragement have you got for my members of a clan who are not quite there yet? Yeah. Well, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't quite there yet for a good eight months. Um, I remember when I first started the, the second business, you know, it was such a struggle. You know, I wasn't, you know, I would make, I remember maybe the first two months making zero euros or zero dollars, zero pounds. And then the second month, I think I might have made like $242 because I sold like six sessions to one person. And then on the third month, I received zero again um, and so on. Right. So it was hard and it was not, it was, it didn't feel good and it felt very frustrating and scary and also kind of like, you know, is this ever going to really work? And, you know, also kind of like, not necessarily what's the point of this, because I think if it's your mission and your calling in your heart, you can't really help it. And you know, ultimately that that's the only thing you should be doing anyway. But I do think it's understandable to sort of feel like, you know, you know, why am I doing this? And why is this so hard? And, and, you know, you know, and also, and, and I think a big thing is also, you know, you start really questioning yourself about, you know, am I smart enough? Am I strategic enough? Am I intelligent enough? Like, do I know enough? Am I going to be the kind of person who's going to be organized enough to run a profitable business? You know? And I think it's more questions like that. I had a lot of questions like that because, I'm the kind of person where I, you know, go full force and I love that and I have so much energy and I'm always willing to to show up and take action and be bold and and really, you know, go into my limits, but I think sometimes you start questioning, okay, well, do I need to be more organized? You know, do I have to plan more and start being a little bit more like something something? And and I think that's the worst thing is cuz ultimately I I truly believe that you can be incredibly successful being exactly who you are, regardless of what that is, right? So if you're somebody who's quite quiet, 
and you just have a lot of presence. Like if you look at somebody like Gabrielle Bernstein, who's in the personal development industry, like she's really quiet and she's very grounded, but she's very powerful, you know, or you can look at somebody like uh, Tony Robbins, completely different personality. He's intense. He's full on. He's got a lot of energy. He's like a, like a bull, you know, he just like moves fast. So it's, it's like really understanding and realizing that regardless of what kind of person that you are, like what kind of personality you have, that's can be just as powerful, but you do have to, um, you know, the encouragement would be you have to keep showing up. I think that's the biggest, biggest thing. It's like, regardless of what you see coming into your world, like externally, first of all, you truly have to keep just showing up every single day. It doesn't matter. You know, yeah, sometimes you're not going to feel like it. Sometimes you're going to be scared. Sometimes you're going to want to crawl back and in, into bed or, or, you know, retreat or whatever. But ultimately it's like, you cannot, you cannot stop. You just have to keep showing up, right? Especially if it's your dream. It's like, come on, like what else are you going to do? Right? So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is really asking yourself if I was already there, So if I was already making, you know, maybe the 12,000 pounds or euros or dollars a month, if I was already impacting 5,000 people, you know, every single day or every single month, if I was already, you know, writing this book or speaking on stage or doing whatever it is that you want to do, if you were already doing all of those things and people loved your stuff and everything that you launched was being like sold out, if you were already there, how would you be showing up differently to the way that you are today? What different actions would you be taking every single day? How would you be around your audience? How would you be on a daily basis? Would you see yourself more as a leader in the industry? And if that if that's the case, then what would that look like on different social media platforms? How would you sell? How many times would you sell every single day, right? So it's really asking yourself, if you were already there, how would you be acting and showing up differently and then actually start doing that? Because that's going to bring in the results. You have to almost become that version of yourself first before you're going to start seeing the money, the impact, the clients, the the visibility that you desire for your business. Wow. Um, But did you ever thought about quitting like on the moms, you didn't make any money? Because remember, you have already quit your job. We have no job. Did you ever, did that ever come across your mind that, you know, it's not going to work. I may as well go back to my job. This is not worth it. Great question. So what I did, um, patience is I, for the first, um, for the first six months of my second business. So my coaching and speaking business, I had a part-time job at a yoga studio. And so, um, I think, you know, people are like, Oh, I don't want to do that. It's like, well, I'm going to do whatever it takes for this business to go forward. Right. (laughs) So again, I think it's really being humble, I think is a big piece, like being humble about, look, you might as well, like I was making, I think about 700 pounds a month from that yoga biz, the yoga studio job. And what that meant, it was like just a receptionist sort of sales job. And it meant that I got free yoga, which was really cool as well. And it was really great to have that. Um, but what was awesome about that is it meant that I had some savings in the bank from working in my previous job, but like, obviously that kept going down each month. Right. But having that 700 pounds, or if you want to say it in dollars, about $950 coming in each month, it just meant that I felt a little bit more covered. Right. I felt like I could breathe a little bit, like I could pay for groceries. I could pay for like the water bill, like my internet bill. Like it sounds really silly. Right. But it's simple things. And personally I was like, this isn't even a question, right? This business will succeed. Did I sometimes like, I never felt like quitting. That's never really felt like I've never, ever felt like quitting, but I I have felt very frustrated, right? I have felt very angry and very frustrated and very stressed out and very kind of like, is it ever going to change? I think it was that like, but I was never going to quit. Like that was just never even in my head because You know, I think the big thing personally, patience, is that I I couldn't go back to a job like I as in a nine to five job. Right. Because ultimately I knew that this was what I was meant to be doing. So then it's like going against all of your heart, your soul, your purpose. I mean, that to me seems very um, that's uh, to me. That just seems terrible because you're basically going against like why you're meant to be on this planet, um, which is kind of weird. And and like I get the fear and I understand the doubt and I understand the money thing. But I think a lot of people, what they don't realize is you know, especially in the beginning, whether it's the first three months, four months, five months is, you know, get a bit of freelance work or go work at a cafe, just like, you know, part time, just a couple hours a week. That way you, you get that like a bit of cash flow coming in and you can relax because ultimately when you're feeling stressed or anxious or worried or putting yourself under a lot of pressure or being hard on yourself about money each month, you're basically blocking so much money because, 
money is not going to flow in when you're anxious and stressed about money. It's, it's very, uh, it's very counterintuitive, but it's like completely true. I've seen that so many times in my business. And as soon as I was able to just start relaxing and start imagining myself as if like, okay, if I was already receiving the money right now, how would I be feeling? And my whole body relaxed and my stomach unclenched. And it's almost like the ideas started flowing in more naturally. And I wanted to launch more programs and more stuff came to me. So I think it's like people get, have it kind of the wrong way. They're like, oh, the money's not there. So I'm going to feel really anxious and stressed about that. And then the continue, and that just expands that. And it just continues to create that reality for yourself rather than almost pretending, it sounds weird, but pretending that the money is coming in and then how would you feel? How would you be acting and how would you show up? Um, and that way the money does flow in. And I think that's the kind of problem about like brand new entrepreneurs, which was the same problem that I had is we, you know, we're just too anxious. Basically we're too stressed about not having money and that just keeps creating not having money, which is pretty funny. Wow. Okay. Do you have a mentor? What are you are going through all this stress up? Did you have a mentor? Yes, all the time. So when I first started, probably the first three months, I did not have a mentor. And then I realized I really need somebody. But like you said, I didn't have like the money, like, or I didn't have the money coming in in terms of that. So it was very, very scary to, you know, take all of the money from my savings basically and spend it on a one-on-one -on -one mentor for six months. Um, but it was, you know, it was very necessary. I think personally, I really believe if you look at all the very successful people out there, like Tony Robbins, um, people who are at the head of like seat like co big companies they're all being coached you know Tony Robin has like three plus coaches um and the reason for that is because obviously it's so powerful to have somebody not only holding you accountable for what it is that you need to be doing, but also just checking in with blocks and fears and doubts that you might not be able to be noticing on your own, right? So let's say that you, you've been doing all this, you've been showing up powerfully every single day, whether in your brick and mortar business or online, regardless of what you do. And for some reason, the results are just not changing or you can't seem to break a seal around how much money you're making. Well, if you, you know, you might not be able to see your own blocks, your own limits around the rules that you set. Like, for example, I remember I'd made a rule in my head that I was not allowed or, to, or I didn't believe that it was possible to launch multiple programs or workshops or products at the same time and for them to all be successful. And I had this rule in my head. It was so weird, but it was like a rule in my head and I totally believed it. And then my mentor at the time, she was like, you know, you, you she, I was talking to her and she was like, wait a second, you have a rule that you can't make money, like you can't be successful in all these. And I was like, oh my God, like I didn't even realize I had made up that rule. And as soon as I've acknowledged that and just sort of realized it, I was like, no, I choose to believe that there are plenty of people out there who are successful in multiple programs at the same time. And that's definitely my kind of personality. And I can be successful in all of them. And as soon as I kind of acknowledge that block, it was, I was able to move forward. And there are so many things like that like more than we even know and realize and so I think it's so powerful to have somebody looking in and, and just ch sort of checking in all the time wow okay let's talk about your business and your new upcoming book <clears throat> yeah so um I'm super excited because it's a book that I wrote back in March um, and I went to Bali and I, I spent seven days in Bali and I started writing the book there and then I continued writing it back when I came back to London and you know I've had um, two or three people editing it and like re rewriting it and things like that but it's been really an interesting process because as I'm sure you know and I'm sure all other your other listeners know every single week for me, I'm growing every single week. I'm learning every single week. There's an obstacle or there's something amazing that happens, or I realize something or there's a breakthrough. And so I think what's really been difficult for me personally is that I always want to add new stuff to the book <laughs> and I want to re revise and change the book all the freaking time. And my mentor said, you know, Olivia, you're going to feel like that always because you move a hundred million miles an hour. So you're always going to think that there's just like this next thing and you're always learning from new people. So you're always going to be growing and progressing. So at some point you just have to bring it out to the world and then people can, you can then bring out a new book afterwards. Um, and that'll be just as powerful. And, and, and she's so right because I think it's so easy to to just feel like um, you always have more to write, I guess. Um, in terms of the book specifically, I mean, what it is really is 
all of my insights and really biggest like success and mindset tips around how to how to be successful in your business, how to create massive levels of wealth and impact, um, but very importantly, all of the mindset around it, right? So the belief systems, the the block or the traps that you might go through, um, the obstacles that you might hit and how to move across them, you know, how to tap back into alignment and go back into flow so that you feel fulfilled and you can be receiving the money and receiving the opportunities. Um, you know, what to do when you do feel stressed, what to do when you do feel anxious, what to do when you feel like the money's not coming in and all of a sudden it's kind of like the, the tap is like turned off or something and you're like, why isn't it moving or flowing? Um, what to do in terms of your environment, you know, what to do in terms of growing your environment consciously and bringing new people in there. Because if all the people around you are at your level or below, you're simply not going to grow. There's just no, how could you grow? Because you don't have anyone to like even see that there's anything else possible for you or available to you. So really looking at environment and walking you through each of these steps, but also helping you with aligned action at the end of each chapter to actually push yourself to take action. I'm, I mean, I'm a big believer in mindset, but I'm a very big believer in aligned action. So if you're not showing up and taking aligned action that's bold and powerful, you, you know, you won't be moving to the speed that you want to move. So it's really about accelerating, accelerating your results around getting much more uh, money coming through the door, but also how to really be creating the level of impact that you desire in the world wow um that is really powerful oh, i can't wait for general are we going to have a copy of that on for our clan members uh, yeah yeah I'm, I'm more than happy that i'd be happy to do that that sounds super awesome and i'd love to um i'm planning it should be out by january so we definitely need to um let's definitely have a chat but i would love that i'd love for them to have a copy of that i think it's going to be I mean, to be honest, if I'd had that book, I would have been so grateful at the time, like 18 months ago. So I think it's, um, it's insanely powerful because it does touch upon so much of the entrepreneurial journey. And because I coach entrepreneurs, I've also seen so much from my clients, right? Wow. wow. We can't wait. Okay. Uh, Olivia, um, mindset coaching. I have seen lots of uh, mindset coaching online. Why is Olivia Sharet? Is it special? What is so special about the mindset coaching. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Why is so special? Because everyone, wherever you yeah, go, you yeah. see mindset coaching, you see that one, see that one, we get confused. So what yeah. is it? Yeah, I love that. So the first thing is patience is that for the first eight months of my business, I spent all of my time reading books on strategy, on business, on marketing, on how to create clients, on like Facebook ad strategy on how to use YouTube to create clients. I, you know, went to probably two to three startup events a week in London. I was networking. I was meeting people. I was watching webinar trainings from people telling me how to strategically create clients. You know, the systems, the six step programs, the, the online courses, the, the freebies, I was downloading all of these freebies or lead magnets or opt-ins, whatever you want to call them, and taking them and thinking, okay, like, I'm going to use this to create clients. And yet, for some reason, none of it was working. I was, I mean, I'm an action taker, right? So for me, action has never been an issue. I'm very, um, it's very easy for me to take a lot of action, right? So, it, you know, I wasn't procrastinating on any of this, and I was taking loads of action, and it wasn't working. And it was so frustrating because, yeah, sometimes I did have a client come in, but it was so few and far between. It still felt so hard. It was such a struggle. Um, it felt like even the people that showed up sometimes were not really my ideal kinds of clients. Um, you know, it was people who mm, were maybe not just the people that I genuinely wanted to work with. There were a lot of people who'd show up who said they wouldn't be ready to invest or, or pay me. And then they always wanted to wait. Um, and so it was just very frustrating to be honest with you. I just felt like, well, I don't understand. I'm learning from these business coaches. I'm learning from these strategy coaches. I'm doing all of the action from these books that tell you how to build a business and nothing is working. So I got to a point where I was just like, okay, there's got to be something else. Like there's got to be something I'm missing, right? Because otherwise like this, this should already be working by now. And so I realized that and thought to myself, okay, well, you know, for some reason, mindset kept popping up all over the place, you know, like mindset, Tony Robbins mindset, like Harvecker, who's um, the author of the secrets of a millionaire mind. He was talking about mindset, um, get rich, lucky bitch, Denise Duffield Thomas was talking about money mindset. And um, 
Margaret Lynch tapping into wealth. Like all of these people kept talking about mindset, mindset, mindset. And I was like, what the hell is mindset? What is it even? I, nobody had talked to me about that before and I didn't even know what it was, right? My parents never really spoke about mindset and I just didn't even really know what it really meant to be very honest with you. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, what is mindset, right? And I started looking into it. I started reading into it. I've read books. I, I listened to trainings. I watched videos. I attending event, attended events for mindset. Um, and I really started tapping into that, right? I was like, okay, cool. What is it? And I started to realize that all mindset is, is your thoughts and your beliefs. That's all mindset is, your thoughts and your beliefs, right? How you think, how you see the world, how, what you believe. So, for example, if you believe that money is hard to make, that's that's a part of your mindset. If you believe that to make money, it has you have to be really busy and, and work a long time, that's part of your mindset. If you believe that business is all about um, the tough slog and the struggle, then that's part of your mindset. That's one of your belief systems. If you, every single day, if you spend a lot of your time thinking about your bills, then that's part of your mindset. If you spend a lot of your time worried and stressed or even like a little bit under pressure and you, oh, you're always hard on yourself, you're always telling yourself like, oh, you're still not there. Oh my God, you still haven't made money. Like, come on, you need to do this. Like, how can you be better? Like, this is ridiculous. You need to give all of these thoughts are your mindset. So mindset is just your thoughts, your beliefs, and you know, there's more to it. There's your unconscious rules. There's your values. So what you what you believe is important in the world. But basically, it's your thoughts and your beliefs. Okay. So if your thoughts and your beliefs are all around things like it's hard, it's tough, money is hard to make, uh, life is life is hard. Maybe even um, you know you have to struggle to receive. Um, you always have to work like a long time, and then you receive the reward. All of these things. Well, guess what? That is what is being created in your world. Why? Because imagine this. If I believe that money is really hard to make or sales are really hard to make, if I really believe that in my core, um, and maybe I don't want to believe that, but I do believe that, right? Let's say that that's the case. Well, then the the thoughts that I'm going to have in the morning are, oh my God, okay, so it's really it's freaking so hard to do. I don't know really what I'm doing. I feel like I'm like running around like on different platforms and nothing's working. So maybe I should just should I show up on Facebook. Okay, like I guess I should just show up on Facebook and then write a post or maybe I'll make a video. Maybe I could do like a local workshop, but that's going to be really hard as well and probably not going to make sales from that. So maybe should I do that? I don't really know. And basically you spend your entire day like that your actions are based off of your thoughts. So even though you might want to be like, yeah, I want to make a client. I want to make a client. I want to get a client. I want to get a client. Ultimately, you're also thinking this is gonna be hard. 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 And so your actions are linked to that. So you end up, let's say, like writing a Facebook post, but in that energy, it's. I'm sorry, but there, there's no way you're gonna get a client because you believe that you're creating a self fulfilling prophecy around that. And it also means that you're actually, um, you're behaving in that level of energy. So your post is not gonna be very interesting. It's not gonna stand out. It's gonna have a kind of energy that's very like like lukewarm when you do the workshop in the back of your mind, you're going to think, okay, well, I'm not, you know, sales are really hard to make and it's really hard to make money. So at the end, maybe you kind of sell, but you don't really sell because you know that it doesn't really sell and it's awkward and it's a little bit weird and people feel that. So they don't really buy from you. And then you just keep creating this self-fulfilling prophecy. So the reason uh, mindset is so insanely important is because all of your actions, all of your strategies, all of your setup, everything that you even like do each day on a Monday, on a Wednesday, on a Saturday morning, in your, on your online or offline, on a networking event, everything that you do is going to be the, the second step after having had a thought. Right. Because you can't unless you're on autopilot, you're still thinking thoughts even subconsciously. So what I mean by that is your mindset is just insane. Right. It's just like, oh, my God, it's like everything. Right. So ultimately, if you start getting your mindset right and what that means is really looking at all of your belief systems, all of your unconscious rules, all of your values, all of your thoughts in your head. Right. And we start shifting that through different coaching tools and work that we both do, then your actions are going to be very, very different. 
the way that you show up is going to be very different. The way that you feel is going to be very different. The way that you think is going to be very different. And the strategies that you use are going to be very different. So ultimately for me, what I personally do is it's powerful and intense mindset work using coaching, using NLP, using all other things that I've learned or like along the way through all kinds of very powerful coaches and mentors and trainers and events. And then using the mindset work and then obviously basing it off of aligned action. So not only just doing the mindset mindset work, but also really linking it up to, okay, cool. So now what's the aligned action? What are you going to take? That's going to be so bold, so powerful, so in conviction. And that's when things change massively for people and they start booking loads of sales calls and making loads of money. Um, so that's why mindset work. And that's why mindset coaching, uh, patients. Wow. Where do we find this uh, fabulous mindset coaching? So, um, on my website specifically, you can find, um, more information. So under Olivia and then Charlay.com. So Charlay is spelled C H A R L E T. And then I'm also on Facebook and I do a lot of free live trainings just from a Facebook live stream explaining, you know, more and more of these concepts. And I do that practically every day, Monday through Friday. So also if you just want to learn more for now, I think that that's something that's totally normal for people. If you're just kind of like, I want to absorb and learn as much as possible, then awesome. You can usually do that on my business page. So if you go onto Facebook and type in, um, Olivia and then Charlay, you'll find my business page and then you can jump on there for all the free live streams every day. Wow. <clears throat> So, Kelan, there will be more from Olivia in a moment. If you are finding Olivia's journey interesting and you are ready to hear more and you want to listen to the full version of the interview at onlinesuccessjourney.com. If you are an online success journey already, click on part two of Olivia's journey and you'll get lots of more tips to help you with your own mindset and online business. And don't forget you can also access all other online success interviews podcasts on the site as well. That's a wrap clan. Remember, success is a journey. Patience and Olivia. This is not the end of the journey. We hope you've enjoyed listening to part one and want to be sure you know there is a second part to this and every journey podcast at onlinesuccessjourney.com filled with even more success tips, uplifting stories, and even a bit of fun. There are dozens of episodes only available to the members of the Online Success Journey clan. Check out the website and click on Join the Clan for more information. Patience would like to thank you for listening to this podcast and she has a free audio gift for you at her website. Go to OnlineSuccessJourney.com for instant access to this gift. Of course, You know that listening to the journeys of others helps each of us chart our own path. So make sure you're subscribed to be notified as each new interview is posted. There are so many ways to stay connected to the online success journey and to listen in. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we appreciate your help in telling others. One of the best ways to share the benefit you get is to rate and review it at Stitcher and other sites by clicking the stars or completing the ratings form by clicking the thumbs up and leaving a comment on YouTube or liking and sharing the podcast on social media. To review the podcast within iTunes, simply open iTunes to the podcast, click on ratings and reviews, then write a review. On behalf of Patience and until next time, thanks once more for listening. It is our hope that this podcast will guide you on your own online success journey.